Hey everyone, howdy ho. Welcome to SpaceX live stream hosted by me, Kevin, from Ohio. I got a sound bite, new sound bite for you guys. Go ahead and muster up where you from, what you munching on, check it out. We're the Manchester United fan club from Ohio. <laughs> I just installed that one right before this live stream started. If you know that movie, name it. I'm not sure if you guys will get it or not. Hint, 2004 was a release date, the year I graduated from high school, actually. All right, so while you're doing that, Rumbillions, while you're mustering up, I'll go ahead and talk briefly about this launch. This is the Hispa, Hispasat um, Amazonas, Amazonas Nexus launch. It's a communication satellite going to GTO and then getting dropped off GTO and then making its own way to GEO, GEO, geostationary orbit. Okay, on a Falcon 9 rocket, this is the sixth, yes, sixth launch for this first stage booster. So she looks a little, a little sooty, a little dirty right up here. Let me go big screen right quick. Right here, we're at T minus eight minutes. It's looking a little dirty right there, but it looks kind of white below just because you have all that frost from the, from the uh, propellant. Okay, live chat. Arthur Potato Hammer, good to see you back here, man. Sneaking out to video the launch from my house. Lucky you. QM1 Eagle Rock. Hey, hey, hello. How are you doing? Astro D Pack 369. Hello from Connecticut. All right, we got another American in the chat. Good to know. What, is this a communist country or something? I thought it was 
this is America. Ready for some boom time. Squirrel King, good evening to you, sir or madam. Eric Beavers, we can wait for the launch. Play the intro again. <laughs> I, I got something better than the intro. How about we go to Doggo Cam really quick? All right, and that way I can introduce introduce Jeb as well. Because Wiley's, actually Wiley's the one hiding behind the desk this time. Peeps is out there, and now he's down for the count. Wiley, go get Jeb. Go get Jeb, get Jeb. Go get him. See if he takes him. Are you gonna come in and take the spot? Uh, he might just, is he gonna take him or not? Is he gonna take him? Yeah, he took him. They took our jib. They took your jib. They took your jib. Bring him here, Wiley. Bring him here. Hey, we got a new face. Who is that? Who's that lady? I don't think I've seen her before. We're going to call her Rapunzel just because. Just because I don't know her name. I always gave my students, when I was a teacher, I always gave them nicknames because I just never remembered names. I had a Pocahontas. I had a Jacrispy. <laughs> Shout out to those guys if they're watching. Man, they were... I think seventh or eighth graders when I last had them. So that would make them, I think, juniors this year. That's insane, man. I wouldn't even recognize them if I saw them. Trinity Waters. Hello. Good to see you again. Okay. You guys are getting ridiculous. Too many, too many fur faces right here. Um, locals members. I do have the locals chat open. Blue 2005. Hail. All hail to the king, baby. Good to see you in here. Gyro Falcon. Man, it's past your bedtime. Yeah, I guess for uh, I guess for you Europeans, it is kind of late, isn't it? What would that be? It'd be what, close to one in the morning, I think. Brass Boy, you're skiing at Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I need to get a Colorado soundbite. Sh I'm sure I can find one uh, in South Park. <laughs> That's going to be my mission for the week. Space Shuttler. I love the intro. I do miss the old where it climaxed in the middle and then S and A crashed and went back. And <laughs> you know, I do. I still do have the old one, so I might have to play it from time to time for nostalgic purposes. Kevin, what are your thoughts on the Chinese spy balloon? Oh, I do have thoughts. Um, I just heard today that they it actually was rigged with um, explosives to like self detonate. So that's always comforting knowing that China's you know, flying balloons over America that have explosives on them. The whole thing is just derpy, in my opinion. IMO. Looked up in the sky after church on Sunday and saw Falcon Heavy. You saw Falcon Heavy on, uh, this must have been, uh, what, a few weeks ago? Good to know you're at church. Good to know you're not a heathen there, Sally Terry. Amazing colors at sundown. One off my bucket list. Yeah, I still have not seen a launch in person. I'm saving my cherry popping for Starship since we're so close, allegedly. Elon's saying March now for show, but we'll talk about that on Friday's episode. Did you cast away Wilson to a shelf in the room? Yeah, he's up behind the doggo cam. Um, I kind of hint at my reasoning in my cloud liquor video of my trip to Mexico that I talk about. Um, Long story short, uh, it was a different state of mind back before I went to Mexico, obviously. And uh, even though I, I Wilson just, uh, it's it's, real, it's really not a short story. It's hard to it's hard to make the long story a short story. But basically, Wilson kind of symbolizes my my uh, I don't know wish to be alone because I'm a loner. But uh, I, and I put them together like my last night in the military on the beach in Coronado and uh, I don't need them anymore. So I, I although I don't want to get rid of them because, you know, it reminds me of the dark, the darkness I was in at the time. So I just put them up there anyway. Yeah. Watch that video. You kind of get more context behind that story. <clears throat> Wild chemist. Hello from Florida. I don't even have a Florida soundbite, man. I'm, I really do need to get more in here. Especially since most rumbillions tend to be from the states. I should get more states. All right, we're at uh, T minus two and a half minutes, coming up on that two minute warning. We'll turn the volume up here in a sec. Let's check in on Peeps and what he's doing to 
what he's doing to poor Jeb. Hey, are you killing Jeb? Or what are you doing to him? Come here. Wiley, bring him here. Get Jeb. Come here. Come here, buddy. Get it. Or, or you could just leave him there. That's fine. Does he still have all of his legs? He does. He's fine. Say, I'm taking care of him. I'm taking care of him for you there, Dad. Thanks, buddy. You can go back to just taunting him or whatever it was you were doing. Sit. Really? You're going to disobey me on camera? That's embarrassing. Sit. Sit and zia. <laughs> Say, you don't have any treats. I might be a puppy, but I'm not that dumb. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Let's go to me. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You silly boy. Let's turn the volume up. We got new host tonight. I need to see who this person is because it was the skunk guy. And I still don't know his name, but now he has a co-host apparently. Engines ignite for liftoff. Yeah, that's the skunk guy. This time, the payload and Falcon 9 continue to be healthy. We're tracking no issues with the vehicle, and both the weather and range are looking green for today's launch opportunity just about a minute from now. Falcon 9 is in startup. What's going on, Texas? Yeah, I do have a Texas sound effect. Let me do that one really quick. I pulled him out of a place on Midgard called Texas. Texas. SpaceX LD, go for launch. Launch director. So with the says launch director's go. final go for launch, Falcon 9 is in startup. All systems go for today's launch attempt. We're gonna watch as Falcon 9 takes Amazonas Nexus to orbit. 30 seconds. We're at T plus 30 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we're carrying the Amazonas Nexus payload on board. Now we've begun tilting the engine, that's called gimbling. And we've begun to turn the rocket horizontally away from Power the Power and telemetry pad. nominal. That is called a gravity turn. And we're still going up, but we're also heading away horizontally from the launch pad. We just throttled down the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for our next event. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, point of highest stresses during ascent. Max Q. So with that, we are through the point of highest stresses on Falcon 9. Now the next major milestone will be coming up at around the T plus two minute and 30 mark. That'll be main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then seek out. And back engine chill. Excuse me, and second engine start number one. Now I talked a little bit earlier about the gravity turn. Part of the reason why we do that maneuver is to pick up velocity. A rocket has to go about 17,500 miles an hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to earth. And that's why these next three events watch, are pretty bro. important. Miko is where we shut down all nine of the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages will separate. And then we'll start up that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage for second engine start number one. <laughs> it's ultimately the Merlin vacuum uh, and the second stage that will carry the Amazonas Nexus satellite into orbit around our planet. So again, those three events coming up in just under 10 seconds. See all that slobber on my watch? Gross. You did that. Don't Main step engine on cut peeps. Off. He'll get mad. Acquisition signal Bermuda. Stage separation confirmed. 
and back ignition. Great views on the left-hand side of your screen. We're looking up through the inner stage at the second stage. And we've got a view here on the right-hand side of our screen of the Merlin vacuum engine starting its burn. This burn will continue about until the T plus eight minute mark. Next major milestone will be fairing separation on the second stage that coming up at about T plus three and a half minutes. Now that we are outside of most of the atmosphere, we don't need to carry the weight of those fairing halves. So we'll jettison them back to Earth for attempted recovery and reuse on a future mission. All right, sounds good, bro. What's going on, chat? Hey, Kev, have you had dinner yet? Yes, actually, I had um, air fried chicken fingers and tots, bra. Tots. So there go the fairing halves. Man, they kept those fairing halves on a lot longer than they usually do. Sup with that. Almost forgot about them. So yeah, the first stage, again, this is the sixth flight for the first stage. It's going to land on, just read the instructions, bobbing on the Atlantic. So hopefully we get some steady ground or steady feed for that landing. What's going on, USA Matt? Good to see you back here just in time for launch. Dog to the moon, yeah. Sometimes I wish. <laughs> Puppies, especially German Shepherd puppies, aren't always the easiest. He is, I think, like 15 months old at this time. Man, 14 months, 15 months old, something like that. He's a little hellion. Speak of the devil. Here he is. Where are you coming from, boy? What you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you going to breathe? Breathe into the microphone. I said breathe in and not slobber on it. Yes, sicko. And there he goes. Just gonna leave Jeb there all by his lonesome. The first stage booster. The I'm first entry burn will be one of Not two entry for both vehicles. scheduled burns for the first stage. And you can hear both vehicles are still on track. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's <laughs> Which he said, we're still moving really fast. What I thought in my mind was the Dumb and Dumber clip where Jim Carrey, Lloyd Christmas, sees the, the moon landing newspaper on the wall. He reads it, he turns and he goes, no way. <laughs> That's just what I thought of when she said that. We're still moving really fast. No way. Yeah, tots, brah. The best part about my dinner was what I dipped the tots in. Chick-fil-A sauce. Yeah, you can buy them in the store now, and, I, and you could, and you have you, you had that opportunity to do so for like a year or so now. So like I, we have quite a few bottles in storage. <laughs> what about you guys? What's anybody have my dinner beat? Air fried chicken fingers, tots, and Chick Fil A sauce. Beat that, suckers. Eric K, I heard Cybertruck production is about to start. Have you gotten an update? I have not received an update, but I've been seeing the video. Uh, the videos that have been posted on Twitter and stuff, and uh, it's pretty exciting. Oh, check out the ground cam of reentry. That is awesome. We never get to see ground tracking of reentry. It's like a meteorite. And there it goes. You're just slowing the booster down on the left hand side there as it re enters the atmosphere so it doesn't like slam into the denser parts of the atmosphere and break apart. And then they'll do one more light up with just the center Merlin engine for the landing. Okay, pumpkins. Come on. Oh, I didn't. I was hoping it'd stay with us so we could see the sparkles. Yeah, totally excited for the Cybertruck. Although I'm a little nervous because originally when I uh, when I signed up with my for my reservation, I just pre-ordered the single engine. But I heard because of like supply chain issues, they were doing away with those. And I'm afraid now it's gonna be it's gonna be getting too expensive for my budget. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But they are optimized differently. The Merlins on stage one are optimized for sea level. These achieve approximately 190,000 pounds of thrust during both ascent and descent. Fun fact: at liftoff, 
Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power and is consuming approximately 700 gallons of fuel per second. By contrast, the MVAC engine is optimized for approximately 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage two FTS is saved. Which is, of course, the vacuum of space. Stage one landing burn. See that stage one landing burn has begun, and in just a couple of seconds here, we will shut down the MVAC engine on our second yeah, stage. Yeah, check out the cloud down. looking. There you have it. I also, I'm still waiting on my Starlink order <laughs> now. We're coming up now at we're actually a year from this month right. now. Just awaiting waiting. confirmation of nominal orbital insertion for the second stage. Nominal orbit insertion. There we go. There. Yeah, please clap. And hopefully you heard it through the cheers in the background. Despite the loss of signal, Cape Canaveral. That landing marks SpaceX's 170th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Of course, the mission isn't over yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light the MVAC engine for a second time at around T plus 26 minutes. We'll see you back here before then. In the Man, she, uh, is this her first time? Because again, I haven't seen her before. But she already sounds pretty comfortable on camera. Good for her. She must be a professional. Maybe they took her straight from like, I don't know, some locals, local news media. <laughs> Yeah, um, you had broccoli and chicken with garlic pasta with mixed veg veggies. Okay, mmm, num nums. Beefaroni, sweet. You had chicken tenders as well, but they weren't from Chick Fil A. Well, neither were mine. Just the sauce. It only had ketchup. Oh, okay, man. Lori, your wife loves ketchup. I always make fun of her because she like drowns everything in ketchup. It's so wasteful. But I mean, she eats all of it. It's, it's actually kind of gross. <laughs> I like ketchup, but Chick-fil-A sauce is better. Yeah, so I just realized that right uh, when we were seeing that that landing, man. I've been waiting a year from this month for my Starlink order to go through. <laughs> I, that might I don't I, I doubt I have the record, but has anybody been waiting more than a year now for theirs? You guys, let me know. Let me know, chat. Let me know down in the comments if you're watching this after the fact. I'll try to remember to check comments later. That's a long time. Like when Starlink first uh, dropped and was available for order. I know, like, I think Eric said he waited up to nine months for his order to go through. So, I don't know. I'm curious what the longest wait time has been. Pasta and pesto, sweet lasagna. It's a lot of Italian for you guys tonight. I can dig that. Hope your work week started out well. Hope you didn't get a case in the Mondays. Monday is basically over now, so congratulations for surviving it. What you doing, plebes? Let's see what Peoples is up to. Doing peeps. Are you mad at Jeb? Why you got your back turned to him? Come here, peepers. Come here, peeps. See, what are you getting me up for? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, that was a huge shock. Like, you know, static electricity build up. Normally, when I first pet the dogs after they've been like laying on the carpet and stuff. You know, we, we share a shock, right? They shock my fingers, I shock their face or head or whatever it is. That one traveled and I f and it shocked my ear just now and my finger. That was rude, peeps. Why'd you do that to me, dude? You shocked my nose. That probably hurt. I'm sorry, Bubba. I'm sorry. Ow. Okay, okay. <laughs> he's, he's mad at me. He's like, you owe me rubs for that shock, dude. I'll rub you later. Go get rubs from mom. All right. Where's my hat? Actually, I do have my hat right here. I wore it during a cloud liquor video the other day. So I just didn't put it on. Hi, bud. Have had mine a year in May. Okay. So you're coming up on your year anniversary in a few months. The teeny tiny homestead. Good to see you again. That makes you hesitate ordering yours. Yeah, depending on where you're at. I mean, they keep on their Twitter, SpaceX and Elon keep tweeting about how service is now available in Nigeria and Italy and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, what about East, the east half of the United States? <laughs> All right, what about Ohio? 
Come on now. They don't care about us on the East Coast, apparently. Maybe they just hate me. Maybe SpaceX hates me. I know their uh, their media team, at least the head the head guy on their media team, when I first started this channel in like 2017, he, uh, he was a former Obama guy. So if he's still there, yeah, SpaceX media probably hates me. <laughs> I saw that. I remember seeing that that their head media guy was a former Obama administration. I'm like, yeah, I probably won't be hearing much from them, but most YouTubers or news people don't hear from SpaceX regardless. I guess I'm just, I should count my lucky stars to be invited to their Starship presentations. <laughs> Why, that's a, that's a weird phenomenon. Why is it that liberals always flock to like HR and, and you know, media relations and stuff like that. It's like they like to control the flow of information. Mm. Live in Tahoe making beef stroganoff now. Dogs all over you. Mm, yeah, they love that stroganoff, huh? I had bacon. All right, this is from Old Saucy. I had bacon dipped in maple syrup. Are you Canadian? and hot sauce for breakfast. It was amazing. Bacon dipped in maple syrup and hot sauce for breakfast. Man, you are hardcore. You must be Canadian. That sounds Canadian. <laughs> All power to you, man. What I have for breakfast? I had one egg and one piece of toast, but it was buttered. It was pretty good. Yeah. I look forward to the weekends because like on Saturday mornings, I get, um, I get McDonald's breakfast and yeah, I know it's McDonald's, but their steak, egg and cheese bagel breakfast sandwich is amazing. So I get that like every Saturday morning now that it's back because the coronavirus took it away from me, which really very much upset me, but it's been back now for a few months and man, I love that sandwich. Taco, Taco Bell has some good breakfast as well and Wendy's. All fast food place that places that serve breakfast have great breakfast. <laughs> And maybe, maybe it's just because the breakfast I cook in the mornings just tastes so terrible. <laughs> so maybe maybe they don't actually taste good, but it's all relative. Like compared to my cooking, then everything tastes good, I bet. Oh, oh who called it? Old Saucy. Yep, he's in Alberta. Speaking of Alberta, hold on a sec. I got something for you. I don't think Alberta is uh, French Canadian. French Canada, though. <laughs> Welcome to French Canada. I'm pretty sure Alberta's like British Columbia area, right? It's on the west. Forgive me. I'm not even good with geography in the United States. <laughs> I'm what you call sheltered and uneducated. <laughs> I'm American. Merco. I would love to go to BC, though, man. What, Eric, what's not available in Colorado? Uh, McDonald's bagel, steak, egg, and cheese bagel sandwiches? If not, that's a, that's treachery, dude. I'd be writing letters <laughs> for real. <laughs> They're that delicious. I would write a letter campaign to my, to my state representative. It'd be like, what's up with that? We need to boycott McDonald's or whatever. Well, I think I'm gonna call it there, guys. If you want to keep watching and maybe get a chance at seeing them to see them deploy this satellite, this ComSat, check out the link in the description below. It takes you right directly to star, uh, this SpaceX video we were watching on the tubes. But I'm gonna call this one an evening. Go hang out with the fam. See what the lawyer wife's up to. Make sure she's not burned down the house or anything. I think she's crafting. But uh, I'm trying to get her to keep watching. The Last of Us. We watched the first episode and I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't like awesome, but it was pretty good. I want to keep watching it, but she doesn't. So I'm like, we need to watch a show together and it's going to be The Last of Us because I don't want to watch any murder mystery porn or anything because <laughs> that's she's into that. So that's what South Park calls it. She's into like murder mystery stuff and that just doesn't, that doesn't float my boat, dude. So we're going to compromise and just watch something I want to watch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Hey, Keith, what's going on, man? McDonald's is not even real food. I, I agree, but there's something to their French fries because try this. Next time you're sick and you can't get out of bed, just have your woman go pick you up some McDonald's French fries. And I don't know if it's because like the grease absorbs the the blackness or whatever, the bacteria, the infection, whatever it is that's wrong with you, you know, it cures you. And I'm not a doctor, but I might as well be for discovering this. <laughs> I mean, these days, what is a doctorate degree anymore? I mean, every every one of them doctors pretty much embarrassed themselves over COVID. So Dr. Kevin, honorary doctorate given to me from myself. Next time you're sick, just get some McDonald's French fries in you. That maybe because it itself is cancer. So it like it cure it like cancels out the cancer that you have from your sickness. <laughs> Kevin, cancer and being sick is not the same thing. Cancer is when your DNA, you know, it just gets out of whack and there's flaws in okay nerds <laughs> yeah all right you guys you guys have a uh you guys have a nominal night now i'll see you i'll see you definitely on friday how about that i got other couple other videos i'm cooking up but i don't know when i'm going to be able to release those so until friday for sure godspeed <laughs>